Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey, it's Pastor Chuck Reese, host of the television series, Answering the Call on Overcomers TV. We're at NRB 2022 in Nashville, Tennessee. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're full in the house with national religious broadcasters, radio, television, film, all kinds of people doing God's work, trying to get the gospel out. We're excited to have Brian Noble with me, the CEO, president of Peacemaker Ministries, yep. coming out of Washington, came Washington. down to Nashville, right? Washington State, that's right. We're on the east side of Washington. <laughs> that's good, that's good. With Peacemaker Ministries, we're talking about evangelism, we're talking about discipleship, but let's go back a little bit to the journey. Uh, talk a little bit about how you got called into this ministry and a little bit about your role and your involvement with it. Yeah, so I come from a divorced family and about age 12, I started an addiction problem with alcohol. And uh, God really was moving me, even though I didn't know him at that point, to a place where he could use me and I could be uh, a person for his glory. And so when I, when, when I accepted Christ when I was 18, it was interesting because all that alcoholism just began to fall off and fall apart. And then God challenged me to be restored to my father, like my dad, and to come to a place where I honor him and that I, I respect him. And it was, it was a powerful time because God just transformed my heart into dealing with tough relationships in our lives. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we've all been there, done that, and got the hat and the t-shirt, right? right? I mean, who doesn't experience conflict? And again, we've heard it said that your misery becomes your ministry. So even before we had a clue, God knew and he started preparing you for ministry. Exactly right. And so I went to, I went to, became a pastor and went into ministry and preaching God's word and doing those kind of things, using my testimony to see uh, God move in, our, in prisons and different things that I would go in and visit people with. And then he eventually brought me into Peacemaker Ministries where uh, we handle conflict resolution on a daily basis. That's awesome. So how would you describe the vision or the mission or the heartbeat of Peacemaker Ministries? So we're there to assist and equip every Christian to respond to conflict biblically. So what I find is oftentimes in families and in different areas of our life is we don't know how to take the interpersonal skills of God's word into our daily lives. We have this, this theology that's up here, but it doesn't come out practically. Right. So we end up breaking relationships. We end up tearing each other down instead of really walking with each other through life and experiencing the gospel together. That's good. So I heard the longest 18 inches in the universe is from your head to your heart. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, we can get these verses and scriptures in our mind and memorize them, but when they're in your heart is when you start living them out. Exactly. And, and if you're a person like me or the other people you've had on today that have addiction, and oftentimes there seems to be like a dam or something that's holding back from that theology moving into practical daily living. And this is where we really emphasize our identity in Christ, that God's presence is with us, his character is with us, that we are walking with God through this. And we don't have to do it in our willpower, we do it by the Holy Spirit. Amen, that's good. So Matthew 18 deals a lot with yeah. uh, conflict resolution. So is that one of your platform verses or? Um... Yeah, so Matthew 18 talks about if your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says that if someone has an offense against you, go talk to them. And so when you see that, it's kind of like the bookends that Jesus is telling us, whether I got a problem with you or you got a problem with me, you guys need to talk about it. Yeah. And so he really lays it out clearly for us to do that right. uh, so that we can show a reconciled relationship to the world. So there's good, better, best ways to deal with conflict. I Meaning we're always worried about how we're hurt and we want them to understand that you hurt me, you made me feel this way <laughs> versus... Uh, I don't know. I mean, every, every situation is different. No, so. no, it's exactly right. So we give a victim mentality when it comes to our relationships. And we're at Peacemakers here telling people, you know what? You're victorious over that. You're not a victim to someone else who doesn't want to reconcile. You're not a victim to someone else's uh, things. You are victorious in Christ Jesus to walk in that newness of life. The same victory that you experienced over your addiction, you can experience over the hurt that someone's caused you in a broken relationship. Right. So with the Lindell Recovery Network, Mike Lindell launching Frank Speech to make sure we have a platform to talk about truth and love without offending or having cancel culture with people, you know, uh, at the end of the day... Uh, the Lindell Recovery Network, we all came out of this addiction, but we burned some bridges. So yes. that's a whole, is that a, a different type of conflict resolution? Is that a trust issue? I mean, we all have trust issues, but you keep <laughs> yeah. burning bridges, it yeah. takes time to establish trust. And Mike talks about that a lot. He does. And, and, and when you think about why we burn those bridges is because we haven't truly understood of our, our identity in Christ Jesus. And so this book I come out with, Living Reconciled, really gives you seven courageous attitudes that you can begin to proclaim over your heart and your mind that pull down those, those gaps between 
what you want to be. Like it, for me in addiction, there were so many things I wanted to do and I knew the right answer. I knew the Sunday school answer, you might say. Right. But to get it to come out practically was so difficult. I like to say in my marriage, the first four years were hell on earth. Then we moved to purgatory for seven <laughs> years. And now we're like best friends. But it was a process of yeah. maturing because right. addiction stalls maturing. Yeah. And so I had to mature later in life yeah. to pick up those social skills. It's funny because when I started smoking crack, I was 23 chasing a record deal. So from 23 to 30, you know, I stopped progressing. Right. And by the time I was 30, God said I could restore the years the locust ate away. So in addition to burning brain cells, I knew I wasn't developing in people's skills, career, all that. Right. But I felt like he would get me up to speed. And that's interesting that you mentioned that. And again, relationships, burning bridges. And back to the marriage point, they say most people spend the first few years trying to fix each other. That's right. And you're supposed to marry them as is. Well, yeah, I tried to create Tanya to my image. I mean, and she did not like that. She's a spicy woman. She told me how it was. But to, to, to really step back and say, you know what? She needs to be created in Christ's image, and I can enjoy our differences. And that's where it's, it's difficult for us because we want to make people respond the way we respond or walk in the ways that we walk. But we are also uniquely and wonderfully made by God. And to enjoy that about each other, it becomes, it becomes a joy then. Amen. So we've been talking about reconciliation, peacemaker ministries, individuals. What about churches? Churches split over certain things? Uh, corporations? Do you guys minister to the corporate world as well? We do. We work in churches and corporations. We work with a lot of casinos, quite frankly. We work with our HR departments and uh, just teach them a path to a conversation that how to have a productive conversation through conflict and to reconcile their differences. That's awesome. So when we talk about answering the call and evangelism and discipleship, two different things, but talk about how because people are looking for ways to resolve conflict that they're actually open to hearing about the Prince of Peace a good salvation message. How are people, how is God using this ministry to help share the gospel? Well, when we show up at a conference, it's everyone wants hope and peace in their life. And so you start talking about how do we have this conversation? They'll end up at a booth like this and they're saying, how do you have this? And we start sharing Jesus, that he's the Prince of Peace that dwells in the heart of every single believer. And that's where it becomes uh, an amazing truth where we don't have to um, conjure up this strength or whatever. It's already there. We just have to allow it to flow through us. And so when I'm at casinos and I'm talking to HR departments, we start out with, you know, the kind of the business conversation. It always comes back to the spir spiritual principles that God has laid out in his word that change and transform us. Yeah, that's amazing. Discipleship, and that's really Jesus saying, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, right? Right. After we baptize them. So that's obedience stuff. So talk about discipleship. Is reconciliation under really discipleship and learning to walk in obedience no matter how you feel in the moment? I actually think it is. I think it's an area of self-control that we have to exercise and where we begin to understand that God's word will come in and, and change us and transform us. And so what, what we misunderstand about our relationships is, is that we think discipleship is memorizing the four spiritual laws or doing these certain things. It's really taking those, those, those Bible verses and practically applying them on a daily basis. And oftentimes we need someone to walk that with us because we have blind spots. We don't even see it. So this is why you could go to a church service, have a great time, and walk out in the parking lot and start yelling at your spouse. <laughs> yeah. My dad used to say that all the time. Guys cut me off getting out of, we just had church. Right, right. <laughs> you know, five minutes later, I've gotten some serious arguments with the spouse, uh, you know. Either in, on in the, the way or after. Yeah, <laughs> you know, over the kid, you know, and I'm like, wow, we were just, ah! And all of a sudden, yeah. in the flesh, <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, that's like a light switch. It's that fast." Sometimes. That's exactly right. That's why Paul says, "You no longer regard others according to the flesh," right? right? Where he challenges us. That's a discipleship to say, "I'm not going to look at their fallenness anymore. I'm going to look at what God's doing in their heart and their mind." Yeah. And to really step back and take that control of those thoughts, control of those emotions, and be a man that way. Yeah. I always tell my kids, I tell the uh, audience, don't teach your kids these principles because when you're in an argument with your spouse, they right. remind you of them. <laughs> Hey man, that's what I don't yeah. like most about my kids. I'm like, and God's like, that was a lot like you. I mean, yeah, the exactly. things that bother me the most are a lot of most things that bother me. So. One of my kids, Gideon, he's a prankster, and he'll say, hey, Dad, isn't the cross big enough? And I'm like, ah, I'm going to kill yeah, you. I'm going to kill you to the cross. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So obviously, you know, answering the call, Overcomers TV, they overcame the evil one by the blood of the lamb, word of their testimony. Yes, that's right. So, we all have a testimony that's in writing. So again, when we fall and we recover, a righteous man falls seven times, gets back up. Talk about how God uses our testimony uh, in in all this. I mean, I think a lot of times when we're when we fall and we, we go to get back up, is that we begin to whine and complain about falling. And I tell people, move on. 
begin to repent of your sin, turn from it, commit to a newness of life, but don't get so hung up on why you stumbled and fell. Begin to look forward and say, God is going to do something in my life and my heart with this testimony. Because that testimony is, is uh, powerful to changing the dimension of our life. And so when you think about this, do I want to proclaim what I did wrong all day in my head, my self-talk, or do I want to proclaim what Jesus has done in me and through me? And Amen. having that power to do that is what is discipleship is all about. Amen. So Peacemaker Ministries, obviously we're hoping is answering the call. People that aren't already involved in a ministry wants to support ministry. So talk about ways people can engage and get involved with Peacemaker Ministries. One of the greatest tools we have is that on the Google App Store or the Apple App Store, you can download our app, Peacemaker Ministries and it will walk you beginning to end through conflict. So you can get involved in your current conflicts walking you through from the App Store. In that App Store, it has ways to donate, it has ways to uh, jump in there and learn from our learning management system. They can volunteer by hosting us at their church. All different ways to bring us into their, corp to their corporations or different things like that. So yeah. we can get involved in just bringing peace or shalom to the people around us. Amen. And we talked about how important prayer is in the beginning yes. of, of today, right? So how can people pray for for you guys? Uh, I, obviously, we need financial support, so praying for our finances, but also we step into these difficult situations that we can have a, a mind of wisdom of Christ in those situations because oftentimes leaders are saying, What do we do? They are frantic, and we got to come in and bring peace and clarity and truth to some of the most difficult relationships in our nonprofits. Yeah, and again, you kind of mentioned it too advocates in the church that can actually host some of this curriculum and, and be the advocate and maybe have a small group. Is that really yeah. something you guys are looking for, I'm sure? Absolutely. We have small groups and you can become a Peacemaker Fellow, which means that you have trained and went through a lot of uh, experiences on how to help people in conflict. There's a path to that, of course, a number of steps. But you can bring us in and we can do that training live or through digital um, as well. That's amazing. So, Brian, Pastor Brian, why do you do what you do? What gets you up in the morning? What gets me up in the morning is this, that Jesus said that people will know that we're disciples of Christ by our love or our relationships with each other. I believe that conflict is my platform, but the gospel is my message. So we use daily conflicts to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And even if you're, even if you're not an addict, even if you're not on the verge of divorce, guess what? You have conflict. Yeah. They're, they're, the tensions of this world press in on us, and so that we want to show the gospel into those areas. And if you've got co-workers, you've got conflict. I mean, who doesn't have conflict I mean, at work I mean, even when I'm by myself, I have conflict. <laughs> I'm speaking with myself, me, myself, and I. It's a three-ring three circus going that's on. That's right. The that's unholy right. trinity I've heard, that's me, right. myself, and I. Yeah, that's right. That's funny. That's good stuff. So, final question. Is there anything else that God put on your heart to share with us about Peacemaker Ministries? I just think as we go through this tension of this world, let's not have it press in on ourselves. I mean, as we have stuff in Ukraine and all around, let us not change our attitude to the, or lower our attitude to this world right now, but really stand as people of light that can spread the gospel message of hope. We are vessels of hope for God and bring peace everywhere we go. So we're not in despair. Jesus is on the throne and we're walking in great confidence with our God. Amen. Pastor Brian Noble, Peacemaker Ministries, check him out. And uh, hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews here at NRB 2022, Nashville, Overcomers TV, Frank Speech. Keep watching. We'll come back in after this break. With Overcomers TV, become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, overcomerstv.live. Be an overcomer today with Overcomers TV.